looking for the Lord uh, because in him I have my life. Uh, in him I have my strength. Uh, in him I have my being. Uh, and I can be all that he called me to be. Uh, all because uh, he's coming. Amen. Uh, I'm looking for the advantage. Uh, I'm ready to fight. Uh, amen. Uh, but you have to understand this. This is a battle. Uh, that we are uh, called to fight. But we will not be able to fight uh, unless we embrace the gift uh -huh, that is within us. Uh -huh, uh -huh. You got to embrace this thing. You got to understand uh, that the power that we have invested in us, uh, amen, is from God on high. Uh, and the way he, uh, he began to give it to us, uh, we find in John 3, 6, and 17. It says, For God so loved the world that he gave. They, giving implies a gift. Amen. And the gift that he gave was his own begotten, his only special, his only very unique son, Jesus Christ, that whosoever believeth on him should not perish. But have everlasting life. Oh, that's the gift. But watch this. In verse 17, it says, For God sent him not his son into the world to condemn the world. Jesus didn't come just to shine light on your problem and send you on to a devil's hell. But he came into the world that through him, we all might be saved. Oh, come on, somebody. Somebody just say it with me. That we all might be saved. You got to understand what that word saved mean. Oh, save them. It talks more than just being free of sin. It talks about being complete. And I want to be complete in him. I want him to move in my life. Old folks said to prop me up on every leading excitement. When he picked my feet up uh, out of the muck and the miry clay, uh, he put my feet on a rock, uh, on a rock to stay. Uh, I want them to, to be uh, all in his hand. Uh, I want him to fix me, uh, fix me, Jesus, uh, where I'm weak. Uh, fix me, Lord, uh, where I'm told down. Uh, understand, God. I want you in my life uh, so that I can be right, uh, so I can be whole in you. Um, that's what that word saving means, uh, church. Um, uh, our gift is Jesus. Uh, and in order for us to consider ourselves saved, uh, to be complete in God, uh, as God desires us to be, uh, we got to embrace uh, the Jesus in the sight of all of us. And, uh, now I want you to understand something here. Oh, uh, I don't want anybody to confuse her uh, embracing uh, with acknowledging. Amen. Uh, can I tell you today uh, that acknowledgement uh, does not have to be intimate. Mm -hmm. uh, acknowledgement uh, does not have to be intense. Uh, acknowledgement uh, doesn't even have to be inclusive. Uh, you know, uh, you can acknowledge someone uh, and be very nonchalant. Uh, about your application at all. Uh, case in point, uh, you can acknowledge somebody uh, by just tipping your hat uh, and keep on moving down the street. Uh, you can acknowledge someone or something uh, by a casual wave of the hand, uh, amen, uh, or even a nod of your head. Uh, but to embrace uh, is to wholeheartedly receive, uh, to wholeheartedly accept uh, completely. Amen. Uh, often to acknowledge, uh, it means uh, the minimum the, the minimum effort uh, is being put forth. Uh, to many folk, uh, they are just like that when it comes to Jesus. Uh, they just want to acknowledge him uh, for a couple of hours on Sunday morning. Uh, it don't mean much to them about church uh, and about fellowship. Uh, they could get here every Sunday if they wanted. Uh, they get everywhere else they want to go. Uh, but they, 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 they choose just to acknowledge him every now uh, and then. Uh, trying to get by on uh, just a little bit of Jesus. Uh, you know, they take their thing too far. Uh, just a little bit is enough. Uh, just a little more favor. Uh, just a little bit. Uh, amen. You don't need a whole lot. Uh, just use what you got. Uh, but I'm telling you, God ain't mean that. Uh, when it came to your relationship, Relationship uh, with Jesus Christ. Uh, see, with your relationship uh, with Jesus Christ, uh, you ought to turn the bucket over, uh, shake it all out. Uh, amen. You know how we used to do the ketchup bottle, right? 
we get it all out, we pour it all out, and when it got down to a point where we couldn't get no more out, we put water in it, shook it up again, and pulled the rest of it out. We better not throw that ketchup on the way with anything on the side of that job. Amen. So why in the world would we decide to skim on Jesus? Amen. I just tell you, amen. Some folk uh, want a casual relationship uh, with the Lord, uh, but you need to embrace Jesus. Uh, you need uh, you need to be all in. Uh, there's something to being all in. Uh, when you decide to be all in, uh, that means that you ain't saving no chips for a rainy day. Uh, that means that you ain't holding nothing back uh, for the next time. Uh, but you know that everything you got uh, is put forth uh, and is put out front and center. Uh, and if you make it, you make it. But if you don't, well, uh, it was a good ride. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I ain't talking to nobody. There might be some gamblers in the house. Uh, you know the phrase, let it ride. Uh, you need to be able to let it ride on Jesus. Uh, ride on King Jesus. Uh, you need to be able to say, look, uh, for the Lord I live uh, and for the Lord I die. Uh, let it be the name of the Lord. Uh, put it all in. Uh, you got to go all in to look. God is looking for some folk that are willing to go all in. Now, can I tell you, if you want to embrace the gift that is within you, you got to go all in. The Bible says, ooh, in Revelation chapter 3, verses 15 through 17, it said, I know thy works. And thou art neither hot, or excuse me, neither cold nor hot. I would that you were either cold or hot. So then, because thou art lukewarm, and neither cold nor hot, in other words, because you're not all in, I will spew you out of my mouth. Mm, that's a word from the Lord. Because thou, I says, I am rich and increased with goods and need of nothing. And know if not that thou art wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. That's what God is saying. That's why, because you're not all in, I got the electric go. See, it is the lukewarm. Oh, it is the tepid, amen, that is neither hot. You see, hot is, uh, is of comfort to you, uh, and it's neither cold. Cold is uh, a refreshing to you. Uh, you know, God looks for us to be the same way. Uh, we can be a comfort to God. Uh, all the comfort to him uh, is that we're doing the word and the will uh, that he has put forth with us. Uh, we can be refreshing to God. Uh, when he can look over here uh, and he can see my child uh, doing what he's supposed to do. Uh, God began to get refreshed. You don't believe me? Uh, many times Jesus uh, looked at the people uh, and he just had to shake his head. Uh, because they were lukewarm uh, and he understood that if you're lukewarm uh, and you're not all in uh, I got to spew you out of my mouth uh, but the worst thing about uh, being lukewarm uh, is that you don't know uh, that your relationship with God uh, ain't where it's supposed to be uh, that scripture said uh, that you think you're rich uh, that you think you got it uh, that you think you got it going on uh, but you ain't got nothing going on but your rent uh, amen uh, because the love of the Father is not not in you, uh, and you would have fooled yourself uh, along with your three other people that you don't fool. Uh, because somebody thought somebody is operating under the spirit of the Lord. Uh, somebody is operating in the love of God, uh, and they can see you uh, and what you're not doing. Uh, but they love you so much uh, they're not calling attention to you. Uh, they just praying for you uh, that the Lord will change you. Uh, but it is up to you uh, to get the understanding of God uh, and know that in order for you to move in here. In order for you to live in him, you got to embrace the gift that is within you. That is Jesus Christ. Amen. It is not God's desire today to see you lost. It is not God's desire today to spew you out. That's why he sent me by here today. I got to let you know from the oracles of heaven that if you are wondering why your situation ain't getting no better, if you are wondering why that I can't seem to make it no matter I don't know, no way, no how I try. I'm just here to tell you, uh, you got to know that either you in Jesus uh, or you in trouble. Uh. Oh, that's all I got to say. Uh. Either you in Jesus uh, or you in trouble. Uh. And to be in Him, uh, you got to embrace Him. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody.
I want to disappoint y'all, but I ain't really preaching this text, amen. I'm telling you now, I'm going to cover it because it, it bears some relevance to what we're going through. Uh, and I'll text today, uh, so don't, and don't expect me to go through the text line by line uh, and break it all down for you. That might be another sermon, uh, but God got something special for you today uh, right here. Uh, and I'll text Mary uh, had this gift of Jesus inside of her. Uh, it is the message from the angel uh, that has come, amen, not just to, to inform her, uh, but to alert her uh, of the possibilities of what is yet to, to come. Uh, somebody need to know that uh, angels talking, uh, angels uh, descending and ascending uh, amen, uh, they are coming to bring a message from the Lord uh, angels just don't stop by uh, just to be cute uh, amen, uh, angels don't stop by uh, just so you can get a look at our heavenly being, uh, your pastor don't stop by, uh, I don't ride all the way from Goose on Sunday morning uh, 25 miles one way uh, just to come up here and look good uh, no, uh, I have come to bring a word uh, from the Lord. Uh, I am the angel of this church uh, and my mission uh, and I do decide to accept it uh, is to bring a word from the Lord. Uh, I just want you to know the day uh, there is a word from the Lord. Uh, the angel of the Lord has come uh, to tell you to embrace the gift uh, that is within you. Uh, the angel began to tell Mary uh, that the Christ child uh, that was inside of her. Uh, uh, it is the fulfillment of the prophetic word uh, spoken by God himself in Genesis chapter 3 verses 14 and 15. Y'all know the story after Eve ate of the apple and Adam did too. God brought forth some judgment on them and he started with the serpent. Y'all remember the story. Adam said it wasn't me. It was that woman. Eve said it wasn't me. It was that serpent. God said y'all just wait a minute. I'm going to get to y'all in a minute. But the serpent can tell you about yourself. Bruh. Uh, because of this, you will be cursed above all cattle uh, and every beast of the field. Uh, and upon that valley thou shalt go, uh, and dust shalt thou eat all the days of your life. Uh, he, if God would have stopped right there, he would have got by easy. Uh, but I'm going to tell you, uh, God said uh, that I'm going to put an enmity between uh, me and the woman, uh, between the serpent and the woman, uh, between the devil and the woman. Uh, there's going to be a problem that exists between y'all, uh, and uh, the woman is going to get sick and tired of you uh, being a problem. Come on, uh, everybody need to praise the women right now. Uh, the women don't get sick and tired of you uh, being a problem. Uh, and the woman is going to see fit uh, that through her anointing uh, and through her blessing uh, that she is going to bring forth a seed uh, and that seed uh, shall bruise the head of the servant uh, and the servant shall bruise his heel. Uh, I'm just here to tell you uh, that the angel is telling Mary right now uh, that this is the fulfillment of that promise. Uh, you have got sick and tired of uh, the devil, man. Oh God, you done got sick and tired of the devil messing with you. When you're tired of the devil messing with you, it's time to birth a savior. It's time to birth somebody you. Uh, can I tell you that in the, in, in the natural, the only one that can birth uh, is the woman. But in the spirit, God, God knows no gender. Amen. So, fellas, if you're tired of the devil messing with you, too, and if fellas tired of the devil messing with you, are you tired of the devil questioning your manhood? Are you tired of the devil questioning your place? Are you tired of the devil questioning your anointing? Are you tired of the devil questioning your money? Are you tired of the devil questioning your health? Well, don't just be tired, but burst something out of your spirit. Burst something out of your spirit. Burst something out of out of your spirit uh, because God said that I put a seed in you uh, and that seed gonna come forth uh, and it's gonna be Jesus. Amen. Uh, you see, uh, you might not birth the holy child, uh, but you're gonna birth the holy thing. This is a big preacher right here. Watch this. You, by the spirit of God that is within if you embrace the Jesus that is within uh, you can birth a holy thing, uh, a holy thing that will come against the wild of the enemy. Uh, see, uh, see, oh, 
to able to be able to verse something, you gotta put something in. You gotta put the word. You gotta put some righteousness in. You gotta let God allow that thing to marinate and, and germinate in your belly. Oh, can I tell you? Oh, everything that we put in us, it needs in order to come out. It needs an incubation period. Amen. You've been fighting the devil. How do you know that your fight with the devil has only been no incubation period? See, see, when the devil came against you, he came against you all of a sudden like a flood. But you have been feeding your spirit with the word of God. You have been feeding your spirit with the love of God. You have been feeding your spirit with the ways of God. And you might wonder why, 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 why have the devil still been able to fight me? It's because your incubation period is not yet. God don't want you to birth a half-baked holy thing. He don't want you to birth a half-baked idea. He don't want you to birth a half-baked idea. Have big solution, uh, but God said uh, your solution must go full term. Uh, you must go full term uh, because in going full term, uh, you begin to do the things uh, that make it come all right. Uh, how many of you want it to come all right in the Lord? Uh, I want it to come all right in the Lord. Uh, I'm tired of the devil messing with me, uh, but my incubation period is still going on. Uh, can I tell you that God promised uh, that while you are in your incubation period, uh, you're not really able to fight off the devil like you want to, because uh, you can't move, uh, and you can't run uh, like you wanted to, uh, but this is the place where God is saying, oh, God is talking to somebody right now. Uh, God is saying, stand still, uh, stand still, uh, stand still, uh, stand still, uh, and see the salvation of the Lord. Uh, you ain't got to run because if you run, you're going to expose your back. I didn't give you no armor on your back, but I gave you the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, all the girdle of the truth, your feet shod with the preparation of peace, peace, the shield of the spirit, and the word of the Lord is your sword. I didn't give you no weapon to run, so just stand and stand and stand and stand in the hammer. And if you can't fight, don't you worry, but the weapon, uh, the weapon that God has provided to you uh, is the Jehovah Jireh weapon. Uh, and the Lord will provide all uh, that you need. Uh, it's the Jehovah Nisi weapon. Uh, the Lord will raise up and stand before you. Uh, and when the devil and when the enemy come in uh, like a flood, uh, trying to take you up uh, off the roots, uh, you stand because God uh, is standing with you. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. It's in there. It's in there. Her solution is in her. Her solution is in her. It's in her. It's in her. Christ Jesus is in her. He's in her. He began to talk to her. Sometimes God got to talk to us in the midst of our battle. Oh, can I tell you now? Embrace the, embrace the gift in you. The gift of Jesus is in you. If you know him, it's in you. You got to know that you have been blessed with favor. Mary was blessed with favor. Look at verse 28. You are highly favored. I know it's say above among women, but understand this is for everybody. This is the last days. I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Amen. God ain't just pouring it out on the woman. God ain't just pouring it out on the men. That's for everybody. But she was highly favored. Can I tell you, you are highly favored. He told her, be in peace. Don't be afraid. Oh, I'm the angel. Mary was concerned because she had never seen it like that before. Some of y'all, can I tell you something right now? God said in Isaiah 43, Behold, I do a new thing. Amen. I want you to understand what God called her, that he's going to do a, a new thing. It don't mean that he's going to do something that's against his word. He might do it in your season like ain't nobody ever seen it before. But all you got to do is know this, that he is God. And he do just what he wants to do. And if anybody questions where you're going, if anybody questions, how did you get that revelation? You just tell them huh, to try it by the Spirit. Huh? Don't try it by grandma, what grandma said. Don't try it by what the old deacon said. Huh? But he tried by what the, the preacher said. Huh? But try it by what the Word of God said. Huh? And if the Lord ain't got no eye against it, you better let me go ahead about my business. Amen. And Mary was, was, was confirmed in Mary that everything that you need, what you need for your deliverance, what you need.
need for your family's deliverance is already inside of you. And look, she began to look at that thing. And she began to say to herself, but if I got all these promises, and I know that the, the, the promises of God are yea and amen, and I know that God is not a man that he should lie, but I still can't see it. How can all these things be? That was the question. Well, I'm going to get to my main point, and I'm getting ready to go. She had Jesus inside of her. But she still was wondering why. Can I tell you something? Jesus understood that he is the foundation. The Bible said in 1 Peter that he was the stone that the builders rejected. But he that was rejected became the chief stone of the corner. Without him, the whole thing would fall. I know I need Jesus, but I need something more than just Jesus. I got to embrace him. Look at this. Matthew chapter 16 verses 15 through 19. Jesus asked the disciples who the men say I am. And after a bunch of answers, Jesus said, well, that's what they said. Now tell me, who do you say I am? And Peter said, because he knew firsthand, he walked with him. He talked with him. Jesus even called him his own. He looked at Jesus and said, Thou art Jesus, the Son of God, the Christ. You know what Jesus said? Oh, upon that rock, upon that knowledge, I will build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail. But in between that answer, there was another response of Jesus. You see, it's good to know the Lord. It's good to know who he is. It's good to know he's Mary Payton. It's good to know he's a lily of the valley. It's good to know he's a bright morning star. It's good to know that he is wonderful. It's good to know that he is counselor. It's good to know that he is the prince of peace. He is the bright morning star. That's all good to know. But do you embrace him inside of you? Because Jesus told Peter, flesh and blood have not revealed this thing to you. If flesh and blood did not reveal this thing unto you, what did? What did? If you're going to embrace Jesus, you got to figure out what is it that's going to take your knowledge of God past an acknowledgement to an embrace. What is it? Can I tell you what it is? If it wasn't flesh and blood, it had to be the Spirit of God. Somebody, come on. You got to know it had to be the Spirit of God. It was the Spirit of God that came down and it let Peter know exactly what was going on. And it was the same Spirit of God, the Holy Ghost, and that with fire that was going to let Mary know when she asked the question, how can these things be? In verse 35, the angel answered and said unto her, oh, the Holy Ghost shall come upon thee. The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee. And the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. When the Holy Ghost come upon you, you shall be changed. You can know God. You can know Jesus. But in order to get anything done, in order to be able to carry out your mission, you got to be able to embrace the gift that is within you. And the gift is in you in eternal life through Christ Jesus. God the Father came and created the world. God the Son came and hung on the cross, but it was God the Holy Ghost that made you who you are in Him and made you able to do exploits. David said through Him, I can run through a troop through Him. I can leap over a wall. It wasn't because David was so blessed with athletic talent, but he was so blessed in the Spirit of the Lord. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. David said, I shall want for no good thing. Uh, goodness and mercy shall follow me. Uh, that's the hope. All the days of my life, uh, I shall not want. Uh, the Lord in my shepherd, uh, I shall not want. Uh, and I will not want uh, as long as the Holy Ghost is there. Uh, you don't believe me. Uh, you look at the exploits uh, of the disciples. 
while Jesus was there, uh, every now and then, uh, Jesus gave them an anointing to go out. And they would. And they would come back uh, having done what he said, uh, but didn't have enough strength to stand all the way. Uh, but it was, can I tell you that the church is not the church, uh, was not the church in the Bible uh, until Jesus left. Amen. Uh, because when he left, uh, he promised uh, not only will you have the gift of me, uh, but you'll have the gift that I put inside of you. Uh, the gift that he called, uh, that he was going to put inside of each and every one of us uh, was that Holy Ghost. Uh, the Bible said, uh, you shall have power once the Holy Ghost is come. Uh, you shall have power. Power in the ability to get things done. You need power. You don't, just, you don't just need to know God. You don't just need to know Jesus. The devil know Jesus. But the devil ain't got that power. He ain't got that Holy Ghost power. You got to know Jesus. And that's your foundation. But the Holy Ghost is what going to take you over the top. When you're faced with insurmountable, insurmountable circumstances. You need the Holy Ghost. Uh, when you're faced with death-defying odds, uh, you need uh, the Holy Ghost. Uh, when you don't know your way up uh, from your way down, uh, you need uh, the Holy Ghost. Uh, Jesus understood uh, that as long as he was on earth, uh, he could be everything to the disciples. Uh, but there was going to come a day when he had to leave. Uh, but he said uh, that I will not leave you uh, comfort that. Uh, but I will send another. Uh, Jesus called him the parable. He called him the one that would take his place. He called him the one that would lead you. He called him the one that would guide you. He called him the one that would lead you into all ways of peace. Be complete. Be whole. He called him the one that would bring you unto salvation. That you would not be in lack. He called him the Holy Ghost. And if you don't embrace Jesus all the way, you can never embrace the Holy Ghost. Bible tell me that when they were in the upper room and they were all on one accord, I always took that to mean that they were on one accord with each of the other 119 people. It was 120 all together, but the Lord just showed me, and not that they were in one accord so much with one another, but they were in one accord with Jesus. I don't care uh, what's going on around me. Uh, I want to walk with him. Uh, Sometimes, uh, if you're going to walk with him, uh, you got to lock arms. Uh, and you got to look down at your feet. Uh, and when Jesus began to put one foot uh, in front of the other, uh, you need to take off with the same foot. Uh, if Jesus is hugging up to the left, you need to live. Left, left, right, left. You need to get your step on with the Lord. Oh, left, 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 right, left. You got to get your step in with Jesus. And when you become on one accord, Jesus is well able to feel you. Anybody want to be filled today? I don't want to just a sip. I don't want just a sip of the Lord. I don't want just a sip of the Holy Ghost. I want all of it. I want the power. I don't want my Holy Ghost in me to be flickering on and off. Yeah. See, uh, understand this. I, I, I got to get ready to go, but I got to tell you this. The, the Holy Ghost is more than a feeling. This ain't toy right. Amen. Uh, the Holy Ghost is more than a feeling. Uh, the Holy Ghost is more than a feeling. Uh, the Holy Ghost is more than a feeling. The Holy Ghost is more than The Holy Ghost is more than to make you fan yourself. Uh, the Holy Ghost is for more than just to make you shout. Uh, the Holy Ghost is to make you live for God. That's what the Holy Ghost did. Peter, without the Holy Ghost, could not live for God. Jesus had just, Jesus wasn't even gone. Jesus was right over there. But he was hemmed up, tied up, tangled up. They had him beating him, cursing him, mocking him. Peter looked at that thing, and when, and when they asked him who he was, he only had Jesus in his eyesight, but no Holy Ghost within him. And because there was no Holy Ghost within him, uh, he could not stand. You might not shout today, but that's all right. Uh, look at this. Uh, he had no Holy Ghost within. He knew Jesus for three and a half years. He was in an intense relationship with the master. Uh, but as soon as he saw the master get tangled up, uh, all the power within him drained. Uh, and when you have no power, uh, you cannot stand. Peter, though Jesus was only yards away, 
he could not stand. But look, after, after Jesus had went to the cross, after Jesus had been beaten beyond recognition, after he had hung and bled, after he had died on that old rugged cross with Peter nowhere to be found. Peter wasn't even, he wasn't even a shadow in the corner. Peter had gone back to the riverside. He had gone back to the Sea of Galilee. He had picked up his old nets. He had picked up his old ways. He was powerless against the wild of the devil. And the devil was looking at him, saying, I have stopped her. I have stopped what Jesus said. In Matthew 16, he told Peter that I will give you the keys to the kingdom. And whatsoever on earth you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever you bind in heaven shall be bound on earth. And whatsoever you loose on earth shall be loose in heaven. See, that's power. The devil said, because Jesus is gone and all Peter had was Jesus. I got him, I got him, I got him, but I want you to know that Jesus was not finished. Ooh, the gift of God that just keep on giving. Not only did he give, uh -huh, on that day we call Christmas, it was born in a manger, wrapped in swaddling clothes. Not only did he give as he lived and moved through the seaside of Galilee, as he preached in Capernaum, as he preached in Nazareth, as he healed the sick, and as he raised the dead. Not only did he give, but he gave on the cross. Because on the cross, at the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light and the burden of my heart rolled away. They were bad by faith. See my side, and now I'm happy all the day. Peter didn't know it, but he was about to get happy because on that day, that third day morning, Jesus rose up with all power in his hand. And when they came looking for Jesus, and Mary saw him in the garden, Jesus said, Go tell my disciples and Peter to come and see about me. And I tell you that Jesus. Did not forget about Peter. And he told Peter, go on with the rest of them. Even though you let me down for a minute. I know the devil desired to sift you like wheat, but I'm praying for you. And what Jesus was praying for was that you have more than just a knowledge of who I am, but that you begin to embrace me and embrace the gift inside of you. See, each and every one of us got some Holy Ghost in us. Sometimes we act like we don't know it, but you got the Holy Ghost in you when God breathed his spirit in you. You just need to get with Jesus and let Jesus pray for you uh, that the gift in you will come to fruition. Uh, Jesus said, uh, go on over uh, to Jerusalem uh, and wait for me. Uh, and uh, the Bible says in not many days hence, uh, there came a sound uh, like a mighty rushing wind. Uh, you know when Jesus breathed into Adam, when God breathed into Adam, uh, it was an individual thing. Uh, but you know what? Uh, God is filling folk with the Holy Ghost uh, and it's a corporate thing. The whole house can be filled. On the day of Pentecost, the whole house was filled. Peter was in the number. John was in the number. James Matthew was in the number. Thaddeus, Bartholomew, Andrew, they was in the number. Philip was in the number. All the disciples was in the number. And when the Holy Ghost came and he filled them with the power of God, Ooh, the mighty rushing wind. Then Peter uh, could stand up uh, when he couldn't stand up before. Uh, then Peter uh, embraced the gift uh, of Jesus Christ. Uh, then Peter uh, began to preach uh, like never before. Uh, then Peter uh, looked at the mocking crowd uh, and said, you are drunk. Uh, then Peter said, I am not drunk uh, as you suppose. Uh, then Peter began to preach. Uh, and then Peter saved 3,000. Then Peter walked with the Holy Ghost. Then Peter talked with the Holy Ghost. Then Peter moved with the Holy Ghost. Then Peter jumped with the Holy Ghost. Then Peter blessed with the Holy Ghost. Then Peter healed with the Holy Ghost. Then Peter, then Peter embraced the 
forgive the resentment. Uh, anybody want to embrace that gift today? Yeah. 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 Ye